All right, gang. So this is the CTS 1110. And in this course, we deal with Windows 10. And Windows 10, it's specifically the configuring of Windows devices, the device itself, getting it all set up, uh, the initial install of Windows 10, and how we set up Windows 10. So the objectives that we're going to deal with, we need to describe the versions of Windows 10. We're going to discuss the new and enhanced features in Windows 10. You're going to need to understand Windows 10, the user interface itself. We're going to define hardware requirements and understand the hardware support of Windows 10. We're also going to describe the application support built into Windows 10 and identify essential connectivity applications used in Windows 10. Lastly, you've got to understand the networking models supported by different versions of Windows 10. And we do have several different versions now. The versions that we have, we've got four mainstream or main versions. There's Win 10 Home, Win 10 Professional, Win 10 Enterprise, Win 10 Education. That's primarily what we'll see. But there's also two specialized versions. Win 10 Mobile, Win 10 N and K editions. So for Win 10's home, it's home users that want a richer, more productive experience. Some features include a fast startup with Hyperboot and Instant Go. You can get either a 32-bit or 64-bit versions. There's a battery saver function. It's customizable start menu, side loading of applications, Windows Defender and Firewall built into it, and Cortana. Now, Win10 Professional allows the business to simplify its operations and concentrate on doing business. Now, in Win10 Professional, it comes with those things in Win10 Home, but it also has 64-bit version supports up to 2,048 gig of RAM. You can have domain join, group policy management, remote desktop, client Hyper-V, enterprise, enterprise mode, Internet Explorer, EMIE, and assigned access. Now, Win10 Enterprise, it comes with everything of that previous version there that we just talked about with Win10 Pro. And it also adds direct access, app locker, branch cache, Windows to go creator, granular US control, and credential guard. So in Win10 Education, and that's what you have free access to through this course, provides the same set as Windows 10 Enterprise. So that's a very comprehensive version of Win10, except for you don't have the long-term servicing branch feature. It supports educators and students as the new curriculum changes to ebooks, apps, and online content. Now, in the future, Win 10 will stay Win 10. The newer versions of Windows will be Win 10, just a new and updated version of Win 10. Okay. Now, Win 10 Education is very similar to Win 10 Enterprise when it comes to licensing between educational institutions and Microsoft. Now we've got Win10 Mobile, it's designed for mobile phones to provide a user experience that is uniform across desktops, tablets, and phones. So Win10 Mobile includes pre-installed Microsoft Office, Continuum for phones, Microsoft Passport, Always On VPN, and hardware-based protection with UEFI Secure Boot, trusted platform model processor and device guard. Now the NK editions, they're sold in countries that do not allow Microsoft to bundle in Windows Media Player or other media software as part of the operating system. Now that's the N releases. The K releases, they're only sold in South Korea and they have some features removed such as Windows Media Player. So those are specialized. We traditionally won't see those in the US. Okay. New and enhanced features that are part of Windows 10. Now, the features that are added that make Windows 10 more secure, reliable, and easier 
to use. They include 32-bit and 64-bit computing support, Microsoft Passport, there was a Windows Store, Microsoft Edge, Cortana, Windows Update, it's easy to upgrade, and we've got Continuum. Now the 32 and 64-bit computing support, the 32-bit version is limited to addressing 4 gigs of RAM. So once you hit 4 gig of RAM, you're done when it comes to 32-bit. Anything beyond 4 gig, you're going to have to have that 64-bit version, and that supports up to 2048 gig of RAM. Okay. So let's move on. Passport. Everything's moving to multi-factor authentication. As a student at the college, you have to deal with that now. I've been having to deal with it for years, and I get that it seems to be kind of cumbersome. It's a pain. You don't want to have to deal with it. But all it boils down to is we've got two different forms of authentication to get into any single system. So it could be password as well as an electronic uh, authorization. So it's authentication-based access control for MFA. Uh, Passport, it uses MFA, and it's built into Win10. It's designed to securely track multiple authentication factors for a user's identity. So it's part of your MFA. And then we've got Windows Hello. Uh, the mechanisms associated with Windows Hello include a PIN code, facial recognition, and bio, uh, biometrics such as fingerprints. So the facial recognition and fingerprints, they're getting over to the bio side of things. So Passport, that's uh, adding centralized management of your authentication and device registration in the enterprise. Corporate administrators, they have to employ Passport for work. Right. Um, let's move on. So we've got Windows Store. That's something we've all dealt with in the past. Allows us to uh, launch store within Win10. Microsoft Edge is that's Microsoft's newest version of their browser. That's what replaced Internet Explorer. They quit supporting Internet Explorer some time ago. Now the catch is Internet Explorer was a standalone application. Microsoft Edge is a component built into or integrated into Windows 10. If you had a problem with Internet Explorer in the past, all you had to do was delete it, or I should say uninstall, and reinstall it. If you have a problem with Microsoft Edge, you have to repair your Windows 10 instance. So it's, it's got its advantages, but there's also some disadvantages. Okay, Cortana. I love Cortana. It allows us to interact with the operating system. It's a virtual assist assistant. It's kind of like Siri. Right, so it's Microsoft's version of it. We've got Windows Update. And one of the things that you'll realize in dealing with Windows 10 is it updates all of the time. And when I say all of the time, it's probably the most frequent update cycle that I've ever seen. Um, the reason being, rather than getting these huge batch updates every so often that take hours, we get these smaller package updates and it keeps the operating system more stable, more safe and protected. And we're going to see it. It's, it's not going to go away. We'll have frequent updates. It's easy to upgrade uh, if you want to go from Windows 8, 81, 8, 82 up to Win 10. Very easy to upgrade. Uh, license just ties right into it, and we're good to go. Now we've got Windows Continuum. When Windows 10 is installed on a computer with a touch screen, it can be used in desktop mode or in tablet mode. And it just allows us to switch how we're interacting with the device. Now we've got the user interface. There's a lot of new or improved features. We've got a lock screen, start menu, search interface, taskbar, a notification area, 
and advanced Windows management. Now, Windows 10 lock screens displayed when the computer first starts. That'll get us through there and we can have uh, important information displayed on there, weather, battery charge indicator, date and time. There's a lot of stuff we can add into that lock screen. Okay, here's an instant example of the lock screen. And the start menu, it's similar to Win, Win 7. Um, same look and feel. Click it, comes up. Um, we've got jump list integrated into it now. Okay, here's an example of what it looks like. So it's built off of what we've dealt with in the past, just a little bit more robust. Okay, now we've got a search interface down at the bottom where it says ask me anything in that figure 1-5. We're dealing with inter that interface, and that's our Cortana. It's easy to search, and the Cortana picks it up and can go from there. Search the internet for us, anything we need. So we've got the taskbar. Uh, it's the horizontal taskbar. It, it comes at the bottom. We can move the thing around. Um, great functionality. We've got notification area. It's located on the right side of the taskbar. We've got advanced windows management. We've got snap, shake, and task view. Here we see it. And the hardware requirements and system hardware support. Win 10 is designed to provide a similar look and feel to what we've dealt with in the past. You can get Win 10 app that acts uh, let me back up. Um, it'll do a compatibility check to make sure will your system actually accept Win 10? Can you load it on? There's everything you need there. Actually, there. Okay. Hardware requirements and support. You've got it listed of your requirements straight on down the line. What you have to have. That's the minimum for Win 10. Now, it's a lot lighter than Win 8 was. Okay, so we've got processor support, system on a chip. Okay. We've got processing and threads. The program instructions are typically grouped in units. It's called threads. Um, we've got multitasking that can have multiple applications or processes running at the same time. Um, let's pop on through this. Okay, Win 10, just like the previous versions of Windows, is plug and pray. Um, it is a little more aware of what's going on than previous versions were. Uh, power management, you know, it doesn't use as much power as previous versions. Um, we're able to monitor the battery, monitor, monitor the power usage, and see what's going on to be more efficient with the system itself. Okay. Interacts with tablet hardware. We've got media support. Win 10 no longer supports Windows Media Center. Does support new media features that kind of cut the cord. Extend entertainment to the internet streaming and it's more cloud-based. We're compatible with SATA, SCSI, or USB. Um, Win 10 can can deal with virtual hard disks. Um, we can set up disk partition styles. Uh, however, we want. We've got UEFI as part of or the functionality associated with Win 10. Okay. We built off of NTFS, new technology file system that's been around for decades now. Okay, that allows us fault tolerance. We can set permissions on files and folders, whether it's group permissions, individual permissions. Uh, it's much more efficient. It's a lot easier to deal with. Okay, it does have some legacy application support. Um, we've got compatibility settings of Windows 95, 98, XP, Vista 7, and 8. Uh, we can emulate those versions. 
with Windows 10. All right, you've got Compatibility Troubleshooter to find out what's going on. There's a wizard to let us know the results. Um, in Windows 10, depending on the version, we have Client Hyper-V. We can create virtual machines on our Windows 10 instance. Now, it's not something we were able to do in the past without uh, a lot of trouble. Now, in Win 10, we just enable Hyper-V, set it up, and we can create, uh, I forget what the number is, I think it's over 9,000, almost 10,000 virtual machines on our host machine. Okay. We can have remote desktop with our Win 10, remote assistance, and if we want to, we can set up home groups and go that way. We've got different models. We can have a work group model, domain model, or as we've dealt with in the past, Windows peer-to-peer -peer networking. Okay, in the work group, it's on the smaller networks usually 10 to 20 computers All right. on the domain model that's we're going to be a larger system worried about security and permissions more and we can have multi-master replication We've got domain name services or systems set up active directory um, on the peer-to-peer -peer, got peer name resolution protocol PNRP, uh, which allows us to recognize or discover the other client machines or the peers on our network. Okay, Win 10 is available several editions, just as rehash. Um, we talked. We'll talk about more the different things that are associated with Win 10. Um, the fact that it's more streamlined, it's easier to use, and it takes the best of what we had in 7 and 8 and wraps it up into that new version of 10. Right. Hardware requirements haven't changed since 7, but they're lighter than 8. And application support, support for Win 10 is designed to work on more than one level. Uh, it enables users to share computers and resources and participate in work group or domain networking models. Okay. 